Welcome back to Windows Wednesday. And today we will be talking about Windows fatigue. And this is certainly something that is troubling for Microsoft. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel. If you've not already done so, leave us a like and a comment down below. And of course, there has been some discussion on Windows, and there's been some evidence that the Windows numbers are starting to break just a little bit. Um, and there's th the challenge here is that Windows is still so large that seeing individual people break off of it is very difficult to spot, especially since a lot of people are still using Windows at work, but maybe some of them are switching to something else for their home devices. And really the things that has kept Windows in this solid, stable resource are starting to kind of falter a little bit as some people are getting more frustrated. Now, also I'll point this out. We look at the Linux growth on like stat counter and it doesn't seem to be going up a whole lot, but something that is as unknown browser, also something that we're not seeing drop as much as we might suggest by some of the articles is that Windows isn't dropping all that much. And I do want to point out like a video we did not too long ago that if a lot of people are switching to more privacy focused browsers like LibreWolf, some of these browsers report a different user agent. For example, if you're using LibreWolf on Linux, stat counter sees you as a windows user that's an interesting point to notice and so if you look at all of the different factors all together the chink in the armor of windows is starting to falter a little bit even though it's not always all of that obvious from the statistics we see but today we have some discussion about why we're starting to see a little bit of this waveringness in windows and uh, uh, Daniel Rubino here from Windows Central says that the reason for this weakening in the power of Windows is actually right now because there's not a lot of solid, dedicated fans which are standing behind it. And really, this is what makes Linux go around. There's a lot of Linux guys that are just solidly here and promoting it all the time and excited about it. That's kind of where I'm at, obviously. But what we're seeing in this case here is where there used to be a huge group of people seriously defending Windows because they were drastically excited about it, even among criticism, we're seeing those numbers start to fall now. As fewer and fewer people are excited about Windows, many people still on Windows are there because they simply don't have a better option. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about here from this article. And they're actually talking here about the 2026 CES. And what they're mentioning here is that despite there is a lot of new hardware coming out, Unfortunately, a lot of the new hardware has a lot of AI stuff embedded in and a lot of people are getting AI fatigue and just don't want to see a lot of it. They say, he says here, I can't help but notice how different the tech space is in 2025 compared to 2015. More specifically, the era of fans seems to be over. Replaced with disappointment, cynicism and just fatigue over the nonstop onslaught of services, not to mention AI. And so... Obviously, fans can be critical. And they say down here, tech fans do have a negative side, but the reason fans exist is because they were passionate about the project. So look at even just a couple days ago, we did a video on the new Linux Mint beta. 22.3 beta came out, and this unveiled the new Cinnamon menu, which is well anticipated. I looked at it, and I pointed out a couple things that could be an issue initially but the reason behind that is just because of how much i love the product and that i really want to see it the best it can be and i also know that the linux mint team listens to to people whether that's the positive or even the criticisms of it and a lot of times when people would point out criticisms to windows windows in an era time past would listen to some of these things and release patches or fix certain things and nowadays it's like you have an entire group of people that Microsoft just refuses to even listen to in the slightest. And that's kind of what he's talking about here is that the solid fan base who loves Windows but wants to point things out, they feel like they've been pushed out because like 
everybody and their brother came out saying, we don't want AI crammed in every, every corner of it. What does Windows do? Comes out with a post about how they're making Windows AI first and agentic and all this other nonsense. Even though they give us the fine print, hey, warning about this agentic stuff, it might actually be dangerous for your data privacy or whatever else. Um, and in fact, even another company, I think it was OpenAI, OpenAI recently came out and said, yeah, prompt injection may never be solved. Very interesting. In agreement with the UK uh, data security group, which pointed out the same thing a couple weeks prior to them. And so they go in here a little bit of some nostalgia where people had some fandom. They talk about the Windows phone. Honestly, I had a Windows phone for a short period of time. I thought it was the best UI. The phone was not stable, but it was the best UI in a smartphone. I love that thing. It was really cool. Hardware was really nice, too. Um, and then they had, um, you know, they, they're kind of talking about the Surface Pro computers, which were decent computers, decent pieces of hardware. Um, and then they uh, out here it says, well, Donna Sakar sometimes received the harshest criticisms for fan. The Windows Inside program was, dare I say, genuine, genuinely fun during the development of Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile from 2016 to 2019. But that is all gone now, too. Xbox is starting to waver. People aren't really interested in that. Between Game Pass prices increasing, not to mention on Windows, it's constantly like, hey, Game Pass is constantly in your face. You know, um, upgrade or use or buy now or whatever else. So Xbox consoles are going down. Xbox fans are despondent. And then, of course, there's studio closures and game con uh, cancellations, mostly due to shifting around money because Microsoft bought up a company with good intentions and then laid off a bunch of people. And now a well-anticipated game isn't coming out. Why? Because it would cost Microsoft probably more money than they wanted to spend for the projected in money that the thing would make. It's all just become a bunch of uh, of corporatism. So this isn't a Microsoft problem either. The next couple paragraphs kind of talk about Google and Apple and things. So I'm not really going to say much about those because we really want to talk about here. And I really think that it, it boils down to this as your ultimate source here. I believe this all boils down to the sad fact for 2026. We are no longer customers, just consumers, and most tech companies only aim to extract as much profit from us as possible. And that is what Windows feels like. And when that is the feeling you get, even your strongest, hardest fans will start to turn away if they see that they're just interested in you for the money that you can give them. Whatever happened to developing a good operating system that is pushed out to people, and you're paying a license for it, even you know the license is built into the computer that you're buying from the store, you're paying for that license even still to this day. What happened to making a good computer, making a good product that people want, and then just letting people do with that system what they want to do with it. No, you have to cram advertisements and suggestions and prompts into every corner of the operating system. You have to push so hard to make so much money off of every person for every possible thing. That is a fundamental problem, and that's what Windows refuses to do. They refuse to stop trying to simply extract as much data as possible from every person, extract every dollar as possible from every person to cram a subscription and in every corner. And it has gotten people frustrated. And that's the problem. So is the magic gone? Innovation feels stale. They're still delivering. No people just expect too much. Yes, the magic is gone. So it looks like here, and this is the first time looking at this poll, 61% are not particularly excited about the direction of Windows. Um, mostly in between those two together, that is 92% of people are still saying either the magic is gone or innovation is completely stale. Most people reading this poll and this is Windows Central. This is a journalistic place specifically dedicated to Microsoft and Windows. This is a frightening state for Microsoft. And indeed, when we look into it, um, one of the few things in the consumer market keeping people on Windows is your gaming. But really, gaming is getting so good in Linux. And, and I'm not a gamer. Don't email me how to get your game to work. I, I Last game I 
play as like Warcraft 3 from like 15, 20 years ago. How old is that thing anyway? I'm not a gamer. I just don't play games. But I have friends that do play games. And those most by and large say, yeah, they get most of the games they want to play working just fine on Linux. Now, there's a... a few games particularly your your triple a games with kernel level anti-cheat those will not work on linux but outside of that most people are saying 90 this article in fact reports 90 percent of games work just fine on linux and between the great work with steam os but then there is a new distribution here called bazite which is also targeted specifically to gamers built on steam os and this is uh offering a more console-like experience than traditional s um operating systems. So um, Bazite said that uh, since Windows 10 reached end of life, their project has seen an increase in new users. Note that Zorin OS saw the same thing. Millions of downloads of Zorin OS. So this is actually it. Uh, so the active weekly users, and you see here that their downloads are just going up and up and up. And I can't, let's see if I can see this chart better. Okay, so here is April. Uh, this here, uh, 1025 would mark the end of Windows. So you'll see this curve here is a little bit lower of a slope than this curve here. That is a significant rise in this distribution since the end of Windows. Massive spike in people looking to use that operating system to play their games. And so now, in addition to Steam OS, which admittedly is a little bit harder to get to run on any old hardware, this is a Linux distribution specifically targeted to gamers that they will say around 90% of Windows games will work just fine. The kernel level anti-cheat is the one thing, and really, this is because the developers don't want it to work. But I got news for you. If you guys can do away with these particular uh, games and just say, you know what, we're running our gaming on Linux now and you just populate and buy the games that run just fine on, on Linux. These ga these uh, companies will be like, okay, we are losing too much market share. Now, at right now, I think the gaming market on Windows is still into the 90% and the gaming market on Linux is still uh, you know under 5%. So obviously... Um, there is a lot to be said, but what we are seeing is a massive spike in people trying Linux to game. And as long as you're not looking to play these top, you know, triple A titles with the kernel level anti cheat and your gaming works just fine, I think many people are going to switch to the system that's not a constant nag, not cramming AI at every corner. This is why we are starting to see that. And as this becomes more of a viable option for people, we are going to see more and more people start to look at this and go, hey, maybe I can make a switch to Linux. Because the reality is, unless you have some very specific niche piece of software you need to run, the average consumer in this day and age can switch to Linux just fine. And I encourage you to have a look at Linux Mint. Uh, I have comprehensive guides on that, which I will uh, link to the end of this video here on YouTube. You can look up my comprehensive Linux Mint guide if you want to see what that is all about. But let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments down below.